How are you doing? I'm Scott. My wife calls me Farmer Brown. Even though I'm not a farmer, I do edible landscapes. And over the last 14 months since we bought this property, we've converted it from a dry, compacted sand desert wasteland, pretty much, into a luxurious food forest. And as time progresses over the next five years, actually four years now, because this has been going on for 14 months, you'll see the progress of what we've done, and I'll also review what happened over the last 14 months to get it to this point. So let's take a look at things, and we'll go from there. So this is the patio of the backyard. You can see some of the old wasted produce that we harvested this last year that's going to be going back out to the food forest. A lot of these weren't ripe or late harvest, um, so I'll actually be using them for different things, mostly seeding. Here's some of the bricks that I'm finishing this patio on, and some of the wife's plants, potted plants, and then the mess. This is what you deal with when you're ripping things apart and in a hurry to get things done. So we're in January, the end of January actually right now, and this is the view from the back patio. This area here um, is still flooding out. Before, when it flooded, it would actually go, and that's why I put the bricks on concrete, because this would actually flood almost to the top and almost enter the house. So we'll put these in so that we're not walking in water or that when it does rain. There's one of our mini dogs. Now, we've got a few herbs in here. It's winter, so things aren't uh, taking off yet. We've got some garlic chives, a little lemongrass, some black malanga, a lot of herbs out here. But as I was saying, this has dropped down, so when it rains, it fills up here. But progressively, that's going to get cut back. This is all going to get bricked with raised beds, just like this. Need to get in and do some edging in that, now that the rain's stopped. But along here, and to a pond over there. So, let me take you through, show you what we've got going. A lot of herbs are going to, this is going to be our entire herb bed. There will be a sediment pond over here somewhere. And this is our, the end of the mulch from the backyard. This is the only area on the property, pretty much this right here, and where the, this pile of bricks are, that hasn't been mulched. So, it's, but the rest of the area still needs to be mulched more. Now I've brought in about 100 loads of wood chips and 120 yards of horse manure combined. So the breakdown was pretty quick. With it, we got a bunch of wood, logs, things like that. But this was all just compacted soil, just like this. And you can see just sand and aggregate. This actually is, has more soil in it than it was originally. I'll show a bit, uh, a uh, insert, a, um, a photo of the soil compaction, you'll see that it was just sand and aggregate. This was our original bed. Um, I put a little bit of soil in here and we grew a couple of tomatoes which are now propagated throughout the property. This was here but it was a tiny little bush. And this over here was our original raised bed. We have a lot of mess going on. We just got through high winds and that. Um, but you can see this was our original raised bed. I made it out of the logs that came in with the wood chips. And we produced a lot of veggies out of this. And then I ended up with some scrap lumber from an old raised bed and I put it in and, and made that raised bed. Now we have all of this. And you'll see the photo in comparison to show how desolate it was. I'm gonna start uh, for this area back here. This, is an, this was our original nursery. Um, we got some sorghum and, and that in here. More popping up. Lots of wild grasses. Lots of weeds coming in on the areas that aren't wood chipped very well. Haven't focused on it. Um, there's our little greenhouse that I still have to get set up my wife's flower area 
This is going to be the Mediterranean Garden. Decorative olive. We've got a uh, jujube that we put in. We just put in, I, which one is this? This is the Blenheim apricot, which is going to be awesome for this area. We've got some bananas. They'll be going up to the nursery, or to the banana patch. Here is our Persian mulberry, grafted to a standard mulberry. These were the two original orange trees. This is a Valencia, and this is a navel. Um, because the season was so rough last year with it getting warm, then it got really cold. We had frost and that. And for down here in Southern California, that's a shocker to the trees. And then it went up to 90, then it got cold again, and then went up to 120. Um, pomegranate over in this corner. This area has to be mulched as well more. It was only patched. That's where anywhere you see in vegetation like this in the way of weeds, it's because it hasn't been heavily mulched like these other areas. But the oranges, these are Valencias. They're great for juicing and they're doing awesome. Now from here, we had an invasion of gophers and the heat and rabbits. So the pomegranate, this is a wonderful, um, literally that's the name of it, a wonderful pomegranate. Um, it was just a stick. I'll show you the clip of that. There was a, an avocado here, and it ended up dying. In fact, there's the piece of it, but right here. But um, I'm gonna see if it actually comes back. You never know. And then this is a new one that I planted, just in case. And it's doing quite well. It'll get some protection this year. Um, sugar cane, I put in a barrier of sugar cane along here to separate it out some. And this little stick here is where we're going to be putting another tree. So that's, and we've got palms coming up everywhere, as you can see. They came in with the wood chips. We've got uh, some kale still coming up. This uh, got ripped up and replanted and that. And there's a bell pepper that's still going. And I'm just kind of letting this bed furrow a little bit and then I'll retop it and replant. Sugarcane is planted all along the edge. I want to create a nice hedge along here. We've got, I believe this is a uh, mango of some sort. Not sure what type. Got blueberry in here. Lots of moringa. We're going to be doing a commercial moringa growing on the property over here. This whole area is going to be moringa. Um, We've got strawberries, comfrey, onions and garlic, black malanga, more moringa. This is our standard mulberry on top of, of it's a standard fruiting mulberry on top of, or, and with a uh, Pakistani mulberry on top. There's our goji berry. We've got longevity spinach more onions and garlic in there. And this is the third generation of the pear tomato. And here's our beautiful cranberry hibiscus, just in flower. More palms, onions, garlic, papaya, little papaya, it's almost uh, tripled in size. Actually, it's more than tripled in size doing quite well this is guava or this guava actually we planted it it got uh, it died back in the cold then it started coming back and then the heat wave hit it and it couldn't get enough water so it died back in I thought it was completely dead but as you can see it's just doing beautifully now um, we've got some succulents down here they're volunteers but a bell pepper coming up through the middle of the tomato and this tomato frame has uh, I threw together from some bamboo I had because this thing crushed um, three standard cages plus uh, a bunch of bamboo skewers was crushing that cranberry hibiscus which was 
about three times as big, and crushing the mulberry, which was uh, in full bloom, and the moringa that was over there. It literally had gone all the way over there almost. And uh, yeah, so we've got more garlic, variety of garlics, uh, everything from music to elephant. Elephant is actually a leek. Got citrus hiding in here. Got some specialty things down in there. Um, some decorative grasses that are creating some nice uh, shade. Sugar cane, bamboo. This little bamboo was very small last year. It was just a little clump. And uh, now it's all this. I don't do running bamboo. I had some over here um, that I had been told was clumping bamboo and ended up having to rip it out and I just finished ripping out that. So, not fun. Uh, one of our bird feeders, it's an old chicken feeder, well it's a chicken feeder that I filled with bird seed in that. They love it. We've got uh, another one over here which actually has some birds on it. They were there snacking. And then I've got a small one right here as well. I draw the birds in to help with pest control. Here's uh, two artichokes. They're doing fantastic. This is one of our almond trees. It's doing very nice for the winter. Hoping for a little crop from it this year. More strawberries. There's a loquat. This is a uh, um, aprium. And we've got more sugar cane. This is a chaya tree, which is uh, tree spinach. Um, that is another guava. There's another guava in the back. A nice little clump of uh, moringa, which I'll walk through here without stepping on anything. The uh, chaya has died back, but you can see at the very top there, if I can get it to focus nicely, you can see the, the new buds starting and all the sugar cane that's coming up along here. Well, look at those seed pods on this thing. This has been cut back a little bit, but once these uh, finish up, I'm gonna be cutting this back quite a bit so it'll straighten and then straightening it up and that. Now, let me get through here. This is the other guava. With it, we've got sweet potatoes buried everywhere. Um, there's some down in here more sugar cane. These were the only two trees here. You can see they're starting to really thicken up and bud out, which is awesome. Lots of new growth. And uh, this one is as well. Lots of flowers. We've got a cit uh, little citrus back there. Um, that is more of a decorative, but it makes these little citrus and they're just insanely sour. So what I'm gonna do is put in a uh, miracle plant next to it, which allows everything to be sweet for a while after you eat it. More cranberry hibiscus hidden in there. This is, I believe this is one of my nectarines. Um, actually, this is, oh, this is a spicy yeah, uh, nectaplum. Spicy. And we've got some other things planted in the back there little herbs and that. Started putting in some moringa. There's Marco enjoying the area. But these are some of our second year, or yeah, second year moringa. Put them in late last year, lots of them. Um, a few made it, most didn't, because there was no soil here and had very few wood chips. So this is gonna get all spread again. More artichokes coming in. We also have some unusual things coming in. I'm letting things grow, find out exactly what they are. And uh, got a tomato in there. I'm not worried about the weeds and all that. They'll get uh, pushed down with wood chips. These two are doing great. More moringa over here. I just did some pruning on them. Um, I believe this is a, another mango. And then we've got a, another uh, bell pepper here. This is gonna get planted out with some various herbs and that. But this whole area right here is actually, Japanese tea house is gonna go there. And then at the end of the rock wall, this will get raised 
as a berm around here and come around where the wood pile is it's going to get all moved and that'll all come around and this will be a natural swim pond so when you walk out you'll actually that's my screener for wood chips but you walk out through there and then you come down and this will go over a Japanese footbridge up to the second level or you can walk down here and get into the pond um, we planted about 60 more trees this last uh, week um, throughout trees and bushes so things are still taking off we haven't even hit uh, spring yet so this is literally full winter uh, we had five days of rain and then it went from there um, that is our rose bed they, those were here before I put a cherry in the middle I don't think it's gonna make it um, but you never know so I'm giving it a chance it was a it was a hard year on fruits and vegetables the, the squash liked it but that was about it um, here's some of our nursery stock that I'm setting up I'm getting ready to put in the new nursery area the cluttered mess that we deal with more firewood that was about 6,000 bricks I think um, that pile over there is wood chips and horse manure palm frond mostly um, that's composting down to make soil and that's the last of my soil that I actually use for potting it's really nice stuff here's two containers that I'm going to be converting into uh, one is going to become the um, biogas unit for methane to cook with and and barbecue with sienna no and then the other is going to be an aquaponic system there's my black soldier fly harvester and that's what the high winds do they tear everything up so I'll be using that frame and actually using it uh, to build out a, a shed um, this is a RV that I actually traded some consulting work for on permaculture design well it's a uh, edible landscapes I integrate permaculture along with back to Eden and a lot of other things these are the original trees that were here the bees love this one um, it's got a lot of new growth on it and they love these there's two of them here and there's a couple of palms and some other things but I've got sugarcane along the back wall you see some of it right there and along there so I need to prune these up put in these logs made an edging bed which has now two different types of sweet potatoes in it and some strawberries down at the end this is all going to get reset this year and built back up some more so these will love it because they'll have more mulch it's only a few inches here there's strawberries even one actually on it but uh, this will actually get edged, raised, um, up to pretty much that level. So it'll bring it up a couple of feet. And then this will get terraced. A lot of wood chips up there, but not much down here. It's a pretty good slope. So um, you can see how the path kind of runs through there. That's going to all get graded out. This whole area is going to probably get leveled out. Um, I haven't decided exactly on if I want to go high or low with it. Um, but it's going to be another um, available space for a shed or something. We got bamboo, or not bamboo, yeah, actually, we have bamboo, cranberry hibiscus, some sugar cane, some guavas, and that growing. I collect up little things like this from project sites that I do, and it's renew, reuse, and recycle. The door's messed up really bad, but I'm going to take this window out and put it into a new wood door I'm going to build for um, one of the places that uh, we're going to be putting in. Um, as you come up the path, this is all built up. This was just a graded slope from that rock level, which is way down there, and it was just a grade all the way up to the back of the property. It was just one even slope pretty much with a little bit of a pad at the top. And what I've done is make it into various terraces. There's some traditional potatoes put, putting in. Lots of them coming up, the ones that Toby doesn't eat. This is our original nursery area, or our secondary nursery area, when we transferred from down below. 
some of the trees we put in. Um, these are beautiful. And it's supposed to produce an edible legume. So more moringa in here. There's some soybeans. There's a jackfruit tree. Uh, there's a um, another jujube there. That's the lead jujube. We've got some loquats here that still need to go into the ground. They're doing great. Um, we've got some other things, jackfruit, um, and a variety of other plants. More pomegranates, uh, wisteria, um, wild tobacco. That We have a big one in the front I'll show you here in a while. And now we have some back here. They create great mulch in that. Lots of dragon fruit throughout here. There's some mess because um, I've been ripping it apart, getting it everything out of here, reset it. And in that little box over there, that was a cabinet, like a nightstand that um, bees moved into at a person's place, and I did a rescue on it. So it's pretty nice. Um, I've got bees actively going in and out of there. I'm going to be building a long hive for them, and pretty much very seldom will I actually ever harvest honey from them. My focus is more for pollination. And uh, if I want honey, I've got access to a variety of local wild sources, but I just want to keep them happy. That way I have good pollination here. So this whole area is going to be planted. There will be a stream running down here because this whole area is the pond. And then it comes down and there will be a stream on this side. It goes down through the rocks and it will flow down. Where those stairs are, it's going to get closed off. These rocks will actually get moved to the outside um, edge of the pond, so it'll be a sweeping edge for it. Um, here's one of the other trees that the bees love, the birds love hanging out in. There were two cypress bushes like this, um, one there and one down there. I took that one out and to put in the trail, which looks so much nicer. And this area has citrus we just planted. I still have to prune it up. Um, this is a standard lim uh, Myers lemon. I'm going to be grafting a variety of other uh, fruit to it, other citrus. Um, uh, I am not, I don't remember the name of this one at the moment. I'll come up with it. We have figs. Uh, I believe this is, uh, this is our Desert Delight Nectarine. And it's already getting new growth. This was planted less than two weeks ago. Uh, it's already getting new growth on it and buds. Look at that. So, a little baby bud right there. So, it's doing quite well. Um, we've got another of the other ones. I'll remember later. And a small goji berry hiding in here. A little tiny thing. It's a little goji berry. Um, I've got more figs, more figs. Another unknown fruiting tree. I bought about 30 something pots and it had one to three plants in each. And they said that most of them were edible, so take the risk. Uh, fragrant tea, olive, beautiful little bush, amazing smell. Um, this is gonna be an area with a little pergola probably. Oh, there's one of our roadrunners. You see him over there? There he goes. Just headed up to his uh, usual hangout. Love that. We've got all kinds of birds. We have two roadrunners that live here most of the time. Oh, he's busy eating. That's a good thing. Eating the bugs. So, um, this is a, what one is this? I believe this is a, um, it's a peach stalk. I, this might be a peach tree, one, um, one of our peach trees. Um, we've got another guava here, um, a jackfruit hiding in here, um, a tamarind that I grew from seed, a little tiny thing, there, more moringa, a miniature peach, this thing will only get about between six and eight feet tall at the most, um, that is our golden silverberry, variegated, beautiful. More clumping bamboo. But you can see it's pretty nice and green down there. 
looks nice it's coming together a lot of mess still which this year it'll be focused on cleaning it up grooming getting the beds a little more aligned last year was about building soil um, this is an Asian pear that had it really rough I don't know if it's gonna make it or not um, I cut it back just the other day more moringa with seed pods look at those seed pods on that little tiny bush crazy more moringa here there's more moringa in here there's a few herbs onions garlic through there um, this all, all you see fl flowering is actually Kodiak mustard and um, daikon radishes mm. that Kodiak mustard is at this age very tender and somewhat sweet but it gets a little spicy at the end um, I'm gonna actually finish up over here and then I'll take you around the other direction so this is our somewhat rare mango this is a gold nugget on top and a standard mango on bottom so I'm hoping for two good crops another chaya right there and another uh, seeding Mexican tree little pods there's the one of the avocados or not the avocados but the olives a couple of them but we'll get over there in a minute go around the long way one of the things we've been dealing with is gophers extreme issues of gophers I've nailed five of them and I'll share with you a product that I'm using that gets rid of them and no it's not a live trap sorry I'd like to like I, I'm gonna be doing with the rabbits but the gophers they're just invasive as anything here like rabbits in Australia almost um, this is where they're coming through so I'm gonna probably put one more trap in here because um, this is where I caught the last one right in that hole so but it was a big monster too but you can see they I dogs dig out some but it's these holes they make are just huge they're just everywhere so nailing them is a good thing if there's one or two that would be one thing but they're taking out trees we've lost a lot of trees because of those guys so here's our little blood orange that's a moro nice little one and this is one of the park benches that actually our neighbor this is it looks like plastic but this is actually metal all metal with a, a plasticized coating on the edges or on the seat and all that but really nice unit so we've got two of those um, that is I believe that is a nectarine here's tomatoes had a bunch of them growing through here actually this one is coming back if you don't take the tomatoes they die but we also had some unusual weather so these little guys I'm gonna be trimming this adding some more mulch this this whole bed is getting um, backed up and then terraced anyway so this whole edge is gonna be a whole new look next this next year there's our peach it's doing beautiful Let's see if there's any new growth on it this one we just put in um, a couple weeks ago as well actually last week it's doing nice but let's see here there we go but um, tomatoes are doing still I like Romas I like uh, pear tomatoes and San Marcos are my favorites more moringa 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 um, this is the uh, they call, all right, this is the Kodiak mustard makes a great ground cover makes a nice little bush they say uh, chop it down before it um, flowers but I like letting it flower and spreading more you can see the dogs have been chasing the gophers look at those holes just everywhere um, this is our Korean bush cherry I am hoping that it comes back um, inside this bed there's a rosemary that was a little tiny start and then we've got this is a Big Max pumpkin 
it's still going. You can see one of the little pumpkins over there from it, but it's got more on it. And it's got blooms, so that's cool. Um, here is our original lemon tree. This was here. And it was nasty looking when I got here. They had shaved pretty much this whole side. Um, I'm letting it all grow out, and they're just going ape. And what's awesome is we have fruit and blooms on here. There's some lemons right there. They're getting bigger. Look at all these blooms just everywhere. So there's more lemons up there, all scattered about. But this thing, I want to fill out, and I'm going to graft to this to or this unit or graft a variety to this as well. Um, now here's a view of the terrace from above. You see this? The path goes down, and then it goes back up to the nursery area. It goes down to the soil area and the wood chips. And there's one of the gopher traps. It's a, by Gopher Hawk, it works awesome. Easy to set. And there is Logan digging like a madman. You can see the dirt he threw on the wall. Going crazy, looking for gophers. We got blackberries here. I believe these are, these are blackberries. Actually, these might be the boysen berries. Um, I had ended up with some unmarked pots. Um, the tags do not last out here. Um, this is a line of Jerusalem artichokes. You can see the roughing, rough soil along the edge. So that'll create a hedge, which will look awesome. Uh, this is my key lime. This was our original tree that we had at the old condo. And it is loving the new soil area. And it's not doing so hot in general because it was just brutalized in the pot for six years. But now it's got greenery at the top and all that coming in. So that's a good thing. Um, another uh, edible, not sure what one. Here's an avocado. Now if you look, this is only maybe six feet from that one. This is a dwarf, possibly a miniature, we're not sure. And then this will be full size. And then right next to it is a cranberry hibiscus and a, and a full chea, another spinach tree. And then over here, I got a semi-dwarf uh, um, Maiwa uh, kumquat, which just got put in the ground. And actually, it was hiding in the nursery area with a couple of kumquats on it. So those are my favorite. They're the round ones, not the long ones. This is our... Um, grapefruit tree it's putting on massive amount of new growth and the plumbers crack grapefruit that it one fruit last year I got three little ones this year I get one big one um, because the weather was so harsh it just dropped all its blooms or blew off and all that um, in that little mess of weeds and that there's bamboo um, these are, I believe that's a daycon radish right there. Here's a moringa that I just uh, planted a stalk from. Another moringa right there. Um, weeds. But in there, there's some rosemary. There's more rosemary down in here. There's some more back there. There's a palm. And this is te Japanese timber bamboo with sugar cane, moringa, there's some sweet potatoes in here. Hopefully they'll take off. Um, there, this is a one of our larger moringas. Cut it out, or uh, cut it back, I should say. And now it's just budding out everywhere. With that warm rain, or the five days of rain and then the warm weather, it's just loving it. More bamboo, more sugar cane. A couple of pumpkins still out in the field. If I don't harvest, I just leave it because They'll rot down, they become, and, and uh, become new ones next year. Or I give them to people as, as needed. I try to give a lot of uh, produce to the neighbors. Logan is just having a blast, aren't you, Logie? He is just going to town over there. Must be another gopher. But he'll turn that whole thing, which is good exercise for him, but look at that wall he's just been spraying. 
Anyway, more timber bamboo. More timber bamboo. Um, variety of native trees and that have been popping up in this area, so I just kind of keep it protected. Uh, more bamboo, that's a volunteer coming up from that one, I believe. Um, this is more sorghum. Love the sorghum. Here's a fig. This thing actually got eaten by the gophers. Um, I replanted it, and this is not a small fig. This is pretty good size. It's uh, 12, maybe 13 feet tall, and hopefully it'll take again because this was a, one of our rescued plants. When I do the cleanup at other places, they have me take out plants and everything else, and I try to save what I can of useful ones. Um, I believe this might be a pawpaw. Um, or it could be my soursop, uh, my big black malanga. And you can see the little ones. There's a bunch of little ones sprouting. I just replanted this from a pot into this area. This was just put in the other day. Um, some basil, beautiful basil. That's an amazing Thai basil over here. Um, this is our Malaysian guava. It's a Malaysian red, or red Malaysian. But it's I just love the color of those leaves. Get some color contrast. Uh, marigold, or, um, um, yeah, I believe marigold, edible. Uh, there's garlic, onions, more sweet uh, uh, sugar cane. I've got three different types of sugar cane. Um, another bamboo, another timber. I have three or four different types of timber or uh, of bamboo for different uses. Some large, some small. This is our lemonade tree pink lemonade lemon and um, look at these look at this growth this was just planted as well recently and it's just budding out everywhere little baby buds all over the place so I'm very happy about that had some papayas in there I think the gopher got it and then the uh, that was from seeds and then the uh, rabbits um, another um, Moringa. Now, oh, actually, you know what? Let me show you this area. So that's, you can see the path that I'm creating comes through. This will get planted out more with a bunch of herbs. This will get planted out more. And that area is where either a yurt will go or a tiny house. I haven't decided yet. Um, so over here, we have the bed of this is all going to get planted out more. Another bench. And this bed is, was pumpkins and squash and sweet potatoes. And now it's still got a few pumpkins with some blooms. Um, but lots of garlic, putting in some onions. Uh, my big chaya tree. Um, this thing will provide a lot. Got some rosemary underneath it. And on that pumpkin back there, you can see new blooms that's cool so this is all gonna get I have to fill this in again because it's dropped so much oh and this is another jackfruit down in there that was that one wasn't doing so well but might recover another pumpkin this one's oranging up another big moringa now at this point we're about oh about three or four feet above the roof of the house. At that corner, we're about 12 to 15 feet above the roof of the house. That's how much that slopes. And that's the pond I'll show you here in a minute. Um, so uh, this is, we just put this one in. This is our pink lady apple. And this is pretty much our little moringa apple orchard area got a few apples here and then more olives down there and then on this side is our pear orchard We've got one pear here that's an Asian and um, I'm not positive on what this one is but and then we've got a pistachio I've got another tree back there I don't know I don't remember which one that is some palms more palms there's another pear but if you look, you'll see just a ton of onion and garlic through here. 
mixed in with moringa and that. And there's another little olive right there. There's the apple. And there's our big trunked moringa. That's a fur, uh, it's going on its second year, so that'll, that'll massively increase. But as you can see, this is all hugo culture, um, which is logs piled with branches, piled with manure and wood chips and that, and then covered with soil. And that actually makes the front of this swale, which is a trench cut on contour to hold water. So as the water runs off the back of the property, it goes into this sediment pond. Here's my, uh, one of my um, loquats. This is a sediment pond here. You can see the dogs have been walking around in it. But when the rain comes, water runs in the storm drain here. And I've tapped into it at a couple of spots. So it runs down right through there, fills this up. Then if it overflows, it flows into here. Otherwise it soaks into the ground. But this trench is 12 feet wide, three foot deep, below five feet of wood chips. I backfilled the whole thing after putting in this whole swale, which is about 12 feet tall. And there is our road, one of our roadrunners again. I just ducked in, or ducked under the, uh, Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hey, guy. What you doing? Little roadrunner over there. Going to zoom in on him. There he is. Yep, that's our roadrunner. Nice little guy. Anyway, so, got a couple of olives. Found out I'm allergic to olives, but honestly, I don't care. Um, I still eat them. I don't have a major reaction or anything. It's just bothersome. So, olive there, another olive there. And then there's, that's where the mango is. Now, so this, I'll put a couple more mangoes in down there. But then up here, we have this frame from an old, it was on the uh, property. When we got here, it was on the back patio. And it's just a uh, tent frame. But what I'm gonna be doing is taking this fencing. I actually picked up the uh, metal screws for this. And this hog wire will actually get put on to this and then completely covering it. And then the um, vines that I'm growing, like the passion fruit over here and the grapes and that will actually grow onto this thing. And it'll be a shade house that you can actually stay in with a little nursery area in it. So, oh, there's one of our avocados actually this was another avocado it was so hot that first year avocados i mean a lot of avocados died this year for a lot of people so very happy with this one it's putting on new growth all the way down there so hopefully um it'll come in nicely these are all our bananas minus the ones down below which are going to get transferred up here and then we have some old railroad ties. Those are going to go down below. And here is all the wood and logs and that that's going to get put along this edge, which allows this to become another little terrace right here. And it's going to be our banana patch. So very happy about that. And I've got some urbanite, also known as broken up concrete, that actually holds a lot of heat in that for the plants. And that's going to become part of the infrastructure as well. So. I've got a variety of bananas, and there's little pups coming in under them, so very happy. I'm gonna put in a bunch more all over the place. There's another one. More moringa. And while we're here, oh, and this is a white sapota over here. I had a, black, a couple of white and a couple of black. I'm hoping any of them will make it. It was hard year, so I'm gonna have to get some more, I think. And this is the moringa, gonna be the moringa grow. So, taking a piece of this fence out to access it, but sorry about the jumpy footage. Apparently, this thing is filling up my phone. But we're almost done. So, um, I put in some berries up here. They did not do well. 
just nothing could hold enough water. Um, this is another jackfruit. It's doing okay. But nothing could hold enough water and couldn't build enough roots because this is just hard pan. Um, even after I put stuff in it. So there were berries here. I don't know if they'll, any of them will come back. But I'm going to put in a bunch more. Then along here, I planted a ton of moringa to make a hedge. You can see some of them. Little ones here. They'll hopefully come back next year. I have a drip system in to help them. And along this back fence, there's going to be a whole thing of pomegranates. So they don't need much water, um, if any at all. So I'm very happy about that. Eucalyptus. And what's cool about this particular eucalyptus is that in here is, let me see if I can find it. There it is. A hummingbird nest. I think I'm pretty dilapidated now, but two little hummingbirds hatched. And I'll show you the video of that. And this eucalyptus put on a lot of new growth. I need to prune it up some. But it's peeling off its bark, which is how it heals and expands. It's doing quite well. So here are a couple more berries. These were golden raspberries. I don't know if they'll come back, but and another eucalyptus. And then there's the pond again. And more moringa along the line here. Um, the rabbits have eaten a bunch. The gophers have eaten a bunch. This was one of our blueberries. This whole area hasn't been wood chipped, so um, it needs to be cut back first. Here was one of the trees that just popped up. Um, it was pretty much a stick when we got here. It's just popped up uh, a bunch of new growth and leaves. More moringa. And then we get into the other side. Here's where the, uh, the pond starts. So you can see the holes I cut in this trench, storm drain. This is pretty steep. So down the trench and through there and into where Logan is. But there was a trap I was trying to use for catching the bunnies, but the dogs kept walking through it. Live trap, I want to move them to the park. More uh, moringa. Lots of them down here. It's going to be a whole hedge. There's what happens when... That's exactly right there is what happens when the gophers and rabbits get to it. They start whacking at it. So all these have been taken down by gophers and rabbits. You can see just, there was about 750 along here. And this is the grotto. So you come up from the main, or the, this is the main pad, the upper pad, or upper terrace. Come up through the trees, the pine trees. This one's doing beautiful. It's been getting a lot of water from the rain and that. That one's starting to come back and this one's doing okay. But through the path, a little forest, and through the forest, this is gonna get cut down and this is all gonna get graded out. And that's gonna become urbanite wall here, concrete. Some of it's over there and surrounding and raising that whole area this will get surrounded with bamboo the good uh, timber uh, Japanese timber from down there and then my friend had some of another timber this is smaller but beautiful um, but the rabbits and gophers were eating the hell out of it killed a bunch of it that was a clumping or running bamboo that just died out which I don't care about the running I don't want it but I figured not waste it just stick it up there and harvest what I could so this is all gonna get graded out this will get leveled off this will be a nice little private area with a pergola and a couple of chase lounges and a little barbecue area and dining area um, for anybody that wants to stay it's kind of a camp out site so because um, the nights here are just gorgeous Look at that beautiful growth on those pine trees. Look at that. Just coming in. Very happy with the rain and that. So, this one took it hard, but 
what's awesome is there is new growth. So that's what's cool about pine trees is they will drop their needles when it's dry and then start putting on new ones when the weather improves and the water impro supply improves. So I figure this thing will green up beautifully by uh, spring. So here's the other bench. And that pretty much brings us full circle on that. Logan is just going crazy over there still. Right, Mr. Barry? Dirty, dirty dog. Right, Mr. Barry? What you doing? How you doing? This is Logan. Logan Barry Muffin. Mr. Logan Barry Muffin. So, now I'll take you down. Show you the front yard. As you can see, this whole area is where a pile of junk and things have been... I had to get my trailer out to move my skiff uh, boat in. So that whole area, which was all set up there, all got moved out, all, all garbage. Um, well, not garbage, but junk and miscellaneous things that you never know you'll need on a farm and ranch. And I was raised in this, so it looks like a lot of clutter, and it is, but it's a lot of usable stuff. I Here's some of the pots. This the big one, believe it or not, it's a double line plastic pot, um, and it's lasted really well. Um, that was what our um, uh, key lime was in for six years. Uh, actually, more than that, seven years, I think. Here's some potatoes that I need to get in the ground still. Variety. There's a uh, yam. Right, I'm going to see if I can get that thing to grow if they haven't treated it. And uh, this is just a um, spiky tree that we like. And what else? Oh, so one of the things we lost was this eucalyptus here, the blackwood eucalyptus. So I have to take it out this year, which is going to suck. Um, and then there's a good chance that this eucalyptus won't survive too. See all the dripping from it. Um, it's more than likely, the other one was taken out by boar weevils. Um, or eucalyptus, yeah, eucalyptus boar weevils. And uh, so I'm thinking that Oh, we've got doves. Look, up in the top tree there. Let me see if I can get a... There's doves up in there. That's nice. There's two pair at least. That's cool. Flock of doves. So, you can see the, just the sap running down this. So hopefully it'll survive. But... Okay. So that's my collection of junk area and stuff and vehicles and everything that's going to get all cleaned up. This area, this is all our firewood and a lot of the, these logs and that go actually around the beds. They'll reinforce and terrace this whole area up here. And here's our little uh, outdoor fire pit area and there's the main fire pit and then we have this one. When it gets windy we can still have a little bit. I need to redo the mesh on it. And there's the roses. I haven't pruned them up yet this year. Look at that gorgeous yellow rose. Um, I need to really cut them back. I'm gonna take them way down. White ones coming in. And then this, uh, I believe that is a heritage rose. It's an old style. Looks nice though. Here's one of the bird feeders. This was here on the property. So I used it. Um, oh, a little compost bin. This is where I actually do real composting for um, grass seeds, things like or gra uh, plants with nasty grass and all that. There's one that just burrs the dogs up. There's our beautiful kale. This stuff is so good. No idea. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Um, 
This is, which one is this? Oh, this is a honey mandarin with a little honey mandarin on it. Mm. Um, I've got, oh, I've also got horseradish in over here, a variety of other things. Um, so, let's walk out front. Now we have seven dogs on the property. Um, and we had two cats. My cat has gone missing. I'm hoping she will return. Um, miss her. A lot. It's amazing how much a little fur ball can affect you. So, this is the front yard, which is... Uh, let me squeeze through here. I gotta build a new gate. Um, I just picked up the hinges. So... Okay, more palms. This was a loquat, which has not made it. So I'm gonna cut this thing back. Um, it's pretty much dead, but I've got other loquats to replace it. The wife was pulling out bushes um, of ones that really don't do well here. They were just overwatering and everything else to keep them alive. Um, I need to cut this back. Um, cat loves it spends a lot of time in it but it's this little I'm not sure what it is but it flowers beautifully and it's just a pretty little bush there's one of my uh, gardens in a box um, haven't done anything with it this was my test and to see if it would survive and we've got thyme there lavender on both sides still cranberry hibiscus that's a little fig mission black mission fig and some rosemary so and it's doing well so we got some of the decorative plants that the wife likes we expanded this the front is a lot more decorative um, this is our butterfly garden oh there's the roadrunner and uh, the other roadrunner hiding behind the butterfly bush over there um, but we're gonna be taking and fencing this area off from the front yard but here is our tangelo. I believe this is our tangelo. This was the second tree we got. And it's just, it's, I just replanted it over here. It's doing awesome. I'm gonna give it a good hard cut back um, now that it's started to take root really well. More sorghum. And there's another standard Myers lemon, which when it takes off, I'm gonna propagate. It tell you how they had to do it before. That's a gopher cage that they had to put around a plant, and uh, which restricts the growth partially. But yeah, so that the gophers don't eat it. Um, we've got uh, some. This is butterfly weed and butterfly bush here for the monarchs. It's doing awesome. Um, Got some other things coming in. Uh, this is just a local weed, but I leave them in. They create good mulch and shade. More sorghum. Uh, flowers, don't know what it is. You can see the wind, what the wind does. These pots and all that were, and this garbage was down the street. Well, uh, the pot wasn't, but the, all that garbage came from down the street. So this little bush needs to be cut back, but it's starting to green up again. Um, this is thick with mulch. Here is one of my fruiting olives. It's the decorative. I like fruiting, so I've been sneaking some in. There is another butterfly bush. And this is the neighbors, but we're going to be, as you can see, we've started a mulch down there. They're letting us. A um, couple of edible cacti. Um, this is a nice... I'm not sure what variety this one is, but it's it's been doing well. So it, was, it stayed in a pot. So and then it just fell over this last year, or the, uh, last month, I should say. So we're getting that. But a lot of mulch to put down or uh, finish raking out. It's kind of piled still. Just was bringing it in, and this is usually I usually do 12 to 18 inches at a time. Yeah, her, the wife's little uh, red wagon. I got her. He likes it just as a decorative and occasional use. This has a bunch of comfrey in it and some decorative plants. Um, we don't know if this tree is going to make it. 
and we don't know if that tree is going to make it. So a lot of these trees they put in didn't do well because they, they were forcing them rather than planting what works. These are going to probably come out. Um, haven't decided yet. Uh, more butterfly bush. That one's doing beautiful. A lot of succulents up here. Um, more plants to plant. Front door is surrounded. This is the little tea area I was making the wife. Um, a lot of cleaning to do. Oh, there's our prickly pear. Have two prickly pears that I'm going to be putting in the ground for fruit. And we have a variety of other trees and bushes in here. A lot of decoratives. Wife likes decoratives. Now this is an interesting thing. This is supposed to only get to three meters. This is a tobacco plant. Wild tobacco. Native Americans used to use it, but it's a medicinal also. So if you scrape yourself, cut yourself, it helps uh, um, cauterize the wound and stop the bleeding. So, But what's interesting about it is they get a maximum of three meters. And this thing is... that tall and that is at least six meters well five to six meters tall this thing is only supposed to be this height and it's a literal tree this is our aloe vera this was the big one that we brought from the other place a bunch of it died and now it's just taken off and look at all those pups it's gonna be awesome but look at the trunk on this thing it's awesome so that's, that's a um, invasive species, they said, but it was here before they were. So I don't know how they can call it invasive. Um, yeah, it takes over areas, but it also provides a lot of nectar in that because it gets, let's see if I can find some. There's a few blooms. It gets these beautiful yellow blooms that the hummingbirds and the bees just love. Um, there's our Arabian lilac. I keep cutting that thing back. It is a soft green and lavender. Look at this. Look at that color. It's just gorgeous. Green on top, lavender. And then it flowers and produces these little berries. So birds love it. Um, there is our, um, I believe this is called, uh, happiness plant or something like that the wife knows I'm not into the uh, the um, decorative side I'm more into the edible side and even that I'm expanding my forte on but this area has been planted out got some rosemary back in here it'll take off a lot of decoratives gophers have been hitting a lot of things oh this is an African I know that look at that it's gorgeous um, there's a little artwork. I cut that tree back and now it's bushing out because it's I had to top it. It was up into the uh, power lines and it was just a stick. So now it's going to be a nice bush kind of uh, tree rather than a mess. And this Arabian lilac, these branches here, I'm letting them grow so that hopefully they'll root. I'm going to be cutting them a little bit each time I come out until they do. So. This is the front yard now. And I'll show you pictures of what it was when we took it, or took the property, and you'll see the dramatic difference. So I'm actually gonna walk across the street, hopefully without getting hit by a car. And you can see what our suburban neighborhood traditionally looks like and yeah I know the neighbors they, they like what I'm doing but it's they know it's a mess so that's the greenery that's happening over there so and you can see how tall that tobacco that, that wild tobacco is There we go, that's better. See what this thing is doing. 
and then we have some king palms over here the neighbors and we have a variety of queen palms underneath them so but I've got building materials out front which were actually acquired from Craigslist and uh, be hit my vehicles and that and a bunch of junk I'm getting all organized here's some beams that are going to be used for a pergola and that brings us to the front door so hope you enjoyed the tour and if you like what I'm doing well like it share it and subscribe and over the next while four years this property will take a major transformation it should be done with all the planting and all the pieces in place and then just enjoy from there we put 14 months in so far and I'm gonna show you over the next while what that 14 months looked like from beginning to this point and share with you the journey from here forward so thank you much oh there's our little shed it's uh gonna get either torn down and relocated or um completely retrofitted it's not it's nice but it, it has some issues <laughs> um but that's it so have a great one thanks much for uh watching and if you like what i'm doing have an eggplant and sit down and enjoy the rest of the videos and i'm farmer brown and this channel is farmer brown grows you can catch me on instagram at farmer brown grows as well and twitter fb grows on twitter i believe it is